We're on to a casino wide receiver. That's what we're going to get into now, our third installment of our film room series. And, you know, this is going to be an interesting film because I know that Brendan is, we just talked a little bit, a couple minutes before, not that big of a Jalen Rager fan. And I just watched him, you know, did all my, my studying and I kind of like the guy. So, so we're going to have a little bit of a differentiation here, which is a good thing. Never a bad thing to disagree. And, you know, probably by the end of it, Brendan's probably going to convince me why he's not that good. You know, I think what's so important when we evaluate players here, guys, always, I'm a big storyteller. I think that's good for people to learn. I had a guy who I was, I'm very close with. I would consider him a mentor. He was part of the Chicago Bears front office. And he told me the story back in the late 90s, early 2000 kind of range when he was with the Bears, that range of this story of a physical altercation. Literally a physical altercation happened between two coaches on the Chicago Bears staff as they were stacking their board. And the one guy said, look, if we draft this player, he's going to spend his entire career on the IR. He's just too small. He's not durable. He's not going to make it. The other guy said, if we draft this player and we use him the right way, he can become a situational Hall of Famer. The guy was Devin Hester. And the reason I bring this up all the time here is, guess, guess what, folks? You can have different opinions. But here's the reality. If the front offices of NFL teams have a difference of opinions, so can you and I. So me and Adrian, we're not going to agree eye to eye. And you know what? Most of the people who are going to watch this, especially in our comment section, aren't going to agree with our stuff. And that's totally fine. So this is a good example here, Adrian, of another one that we don't see eye to eye on. And that's totally okay. Yeah, yeah. We don't see eye to eye. I don't think our fans saw eye to eye with us on KJ Hamler. It seemed like the, the people like KJ Hamler a little totally bit more yeah. than we did. Also, Penn State crowd, though, so do, do keep in mind on the bias. Uh, and who do we do last? Oh, Brandon Ayuk. And I really like Brandon Ayuk last week. So. As did I, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 am, I am tossing up between the two. I, I just said before the show, I, I, here's the way I look at it. I feel like Rager might be better for the Eagles uh, because I'm just kind of looking at what they want. I think they really want speed this offseason. And, and Ayuk has it, too. Don't, don't get me wrong. Uh, and Ayuk can do more. But – I'm looking at Rager as that home run hitting grand slams type. I understand exactly what you're talking about here because the way you value guys is totally different. Perfect example here, Adrian. Another guy who's probably in the same, um, let's say, range, probably in the 20 to 45 range, is going to be a guy like T. Higgins from Clemson. Yep. And if you're looking for just vertical, go get the ball, speed, explosion – you might think he's a better receiver than these guys, but for your systematic value and need, he might not fit that as much, if that makes sense. Yep. All right, so let's get into the tape. First thing I want to show is just the straight speed, and we're just going to let Brendan play it. I don't think I took the volume out, so I, I don't remember if I did or not, so if you don't mind just, like, muting uh, the clips as, as I speak here. Uh, so the first thing we're going to show is – Yes, yeah, see, I forgot to take Got that. it. It's all good. Yeah, so he's standing in the – well, he's not standing in the end zone. He's laying down the end zone. So he's going to take an illegal forward pass and, and run it for a touchdown. So it's a penalty on the play. But I just wanted to show how fast he is. I mean, he's freaking electric. He can move in space. This is always one of those funky little return plays where you hide one of the return men in a letter. So he's hiding here in the letter, and he pops up, and then all of a sudden he's going to get a full head of steam. And, Adrian, you're 100% right. I mean, look, he's a track star athlete. He can flat out run straight. And, obviously, when you're asked to literally run straight and never move, he can do that very well. Yeah, so we got that. And then, we're gonna, then he's going to run real straight real quickly again. I guess not. I guess I didn't put that clip in there. It's okay. So let's take a maybe, peek. Maybe the next one, but this is the post for a touchdown. This is the post for a touchdown. Now – Let's first talk about this, because everyone, everyone is thinking it, so let's talk about the elephant in the room. Yes, the Big 12 barely plays defense. Okay? No, that's, they don't play any defense at all. Yeah. And, and that's a fair statement. However, I think it's also fair that if we're talking about that, the same rhetoric can probably be said about most of the Pac-12. Yeah, right? I mean, look, I had that rhetoric, and then I watched him play Ohio State, and he did some things against Ohio State. So that's why I'm like, all right, well, the Big 12, maybe it's not that big of a deal if he produced against Ohio State, which has two guys who are pretty much going to be first-round talents. Yeah, it's totally fair, a fair assessment there, Adrian. You know, and I also think the Big 12 has the rep, and I think it's earned, of their receivers don't run a full route tree. Um, oh, and yeah. I think and we're going to get into that, which is, which is 
why this is going to be an interesting discussion and why Jalen Rager is an interesting prospect. He is. Now, this is, this is what I love about this clip. So first off, as Adrian talked about, he has the speed. So his speed is going to force this corner to flip his hips and get running. Because you hear the old expression, if you're even, you're leaving. If I'm in a backpedal and someone's running, I'm going to lose that race 10 out of 10 times. I'm never going to beat someone in a backpedal. So at some point in time, i got to flip my hips and get moving. So Jalen's speed forces this corner to flip his hips and run a little earlier than most. But what I really like about this specific clip here, Adrian, is what you're going to notice here, folks, Jalen's going to take a long stride at the top almost to simulate that he's decelerating. He's not. He's just long striding opposed to short striding. The reason he does this is what he's doing is he's forcing the time of this corner. His perception is, oh, it's a go route, right? So I have to open my hips and run sooner to stay with him. So what he has to do is he has to flip his hips sooner. Now the problem for this corner is going to be, Jalen's going to take a long stride which means the blind spot for this corner is going to be a longer amount of time, and that's when he makes his break on the post. So right here, he's in the blind spot. Yep. He's got no clue, and as soon as he's in the blind spot, it's a wrap. Good night. And then we see a little bit of the hands there. Not bad. Get out, stretch, make the catch. All right, so next thing we're going to look at here. This Okay, so this is the one that was supposed to be number two. So he's just running past the corner. There's nothing really special here. It's just straight line speed. Uh, straight blown coverage here, too. And it's hilarious that Texas, at one point this season, Adrian wore shirts that's a DBU, and you guys are getting butt-naked open receivers running just straight down the field. Yeah, this, It's so funny, the, the slide we've seen from Texas, man, in years. Man, you ain't kidding about Texas. In Texas, the football team, Texas sliding in basketball as well, all over the place. All right, so here's what we're going to show here. So hands. Here's the interesting thing about his hands and what I saw. I feel like he has concentration lapses where he definitely drops the ball. But then there are other points where this is an outstanding one-handed catch. And then there's other occasions where he's catching the ball in traffic. And I think that's encouraging as well because, you know, we saw Hamler, for instance, catching the ball with his body, not really going up and getting the ball. So these are the things that Jalen Rager actually does. This is what's the most frustrating thing in the world for a coach is when you see flashes right? You know, it's that old term, and I'm sure people in Philadelphia have heard this term and this word a million times. It's what is his possibilities? What is his potential, Adrian? Oh, that drives guys up a freaking tree because potential means you haven't done shit. That's what it means. That should be the real definition of potential. It means you haven't done it yet, but it shows that you could do it. So Adrian, we talked about casino corners and we talked about casino receivers. Unbelievable catch here unbelievable catch but then you'll see him drop some wide open ones man oh yeah oh yeah for sure i'll tell you what man i wouldn't be feeling the way i am against uh, at, for rager if i didn't watch again that ohio state tape that that ohio state tape is probably the biggest tease you know that i'll probably see we'll, we'll see because my my instincts are telling me one thing i trust my instincts but you're telling me another thing and that makes me insecure because you're the you're the expert and i'm not I just think it's one of those things, Adrian, it's how you do it sometimes, how you do it all the time. So I'm, I'm a big believer in that. And you know what? The other thing I think it's important to say about this, Adrian, I would be higher on him if it wasn't for the fact that this draft class is so darn deep. You have so many good receivers here, right? Yeah. So for me, if, if I'm going to roll the dice on a guy, I like rolling the dice on a guy either late in a deep draft or early in a shallow draft. Well, it's a deep draft. So to me personally, I'm saying, okay, I'd rather roll the dice later kind of thing. Yeah. And I also realized that I forgot to put the route running clip earlier in the, in the thing too. So I just completely screwed up all the way around. I wanted to get into that actually right away. So um, do you want to get into that now or do you want to, or do you want to wait? Yeah, let's talk about route running stuff. Okay. So route running. This, a lot this, of is, this is very, very important and, and the most uh, important thing on, that we're going to discuss here. A lot of the route running stuff that you're going to see Jalen Rager do is going to be vertical and deep movement. Now, I get it. Here's the question you always need to ask. Does he do this because he can't do it? Or does he do the routes because it's what he's asked to do? That's been the question a lot of times about guys coming out of the Pac-12, right? Coleman, for example, years ago was drafted by the Browns coming out of Baylor. Okay, turns out he couldn't do it. Yep. Okay, that's why he didn't run those routes. Opposed to, you know, some other guys who've come out of the Pac-12 and found more success, say a guy like Des Bryant, 
okay, he could do it. He just wasn't asked to do it based on his offense. You know, we see so much spread-based offense, which typically means outside receivers maybe only have eight routes. Slot receivers maybe have eight routes. So that's 16, opposed to some more pro-style offenses, like you see a little more common in the pack, in the, excuse me, the SEC. Every receiver runs all 16 routes, something like that, for example. Yeah. Right now, he can't run a slant. Right now, he can't run an out route. He can't run an in route. There's no suddenness. There's no nothing. So his career is going to be defined by who his wide receivers coach is going to be. And if he's got a good one, then he's probably not going to be a bust. So that's, you know, kind of the way I look at it. Um, and, and again, it, it's, it's going back to the Ohio State tape. So the one clip that we're going to show uh, where he didn't round off the route, this, this came against, I think it was, was it Arnett or was it Akuda? It it's Akuda. Been, it was Akuda. So he can't even run a route, and he's catching the ball against one of the best corners in the nation. So that, to me, is, is the potential tease uh, that we'll find out if I'm right in a couple of years. And if I'm wrong about Jalen Rager – then it will be a lesson learned to not take one tape and think that uh, he's going to be good enough. And it's also important to say here, Adrian depends on the situation he goes to. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I, I think, like, if he's, in, if he's in Philly and he gets to play with Carson and they throw the deep ball a ton, and I know Carson likes to push it down the field, I think he could work here. So, and let me, let me double down on that. Let me double down on that, Adrian. Let's say, for example, the Eagles go out and get another vet big body receiver on a prove it deal like an AJ Green opposite of Alshon, and then they just say, Jalen, we're going to ask you to push the ball vertical. That's all we're going to ask you to do. He could be gangbusters, kind of like we saw DK Metcalf do, right? Metcalf yeah. was asked to make his living off of play action, and in Seattle, he was a great fit. But you move him somewhere else, I don't know if we see the same production. No, I, I agree. And, and that's why I think he fits Philly, because I don't think he would be asked to run the full route tree here. I think he would be asked to go deep. They're always going to have weapons. They're going to be bringing guys in all the time. So he's going to be asked really to do one thing, and that's go deep. He's, he'll, he'll go deep, he'll probably run the stop route or comeback route, right? He'll learn a couple other things. And he's going to have to learn the, the nuances of the route running. But in terms of running a vertical route, he's got that down. He does. And, and as far as being a fit in Philly, Adrian, let's be realistic. Anyone who has a pulse right now that played college receiver is a fit in Philadelphia because of demand, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Beggars yeah. can't be choosers right now, right? But yeah, exactly. If exactly. they get a situation where they continue to get, a, let's say, another big body receiver, or maybe J.J. Arcega Whiteside, it clicks, right? And now you have a big body receiver opposite of Alshon. Yeah, it absolutely could be a good fit. But the flip side, Adrian, I think this is a realistic conversation you could have is, is Alshon done? It's possible we could say that. And is J.J. Arcega White's eye a bust? It's possible we could say that too. So yeah. if those two things are true, now all of a sudden you're saying, okay, do we really want a younger Deshaun Jackson if we can't do anything intermediate, we only can do things vertically? Okay, maybe, yeah, we can win the tight ends. But to me, Adrian, again, this draft class is so darn deep, I don't want to roll the dice on an unfinished product. Yeah. Like I'm I could two guys, though. He's not the only guy I would take. So sure. that's like for, for the second pick, like if, if you had, I don't know, if you say you trade back in the first round, if you got Rager, then you paired him with Ayuk. I think that would be perfect, but I don't think Ayuk will get to the second round, but just, you know, just spitball in there. You, you would take a more sure thing with your second pick. Yeah. I think that that's, that's a fair way to go about it. I mean, I think honestly, Adrian, there's a million ways to skin this cat with this draft because there's so many good receivers. It opens up the door for a lot of different conversations and, you know, truthfully, I could un I can make a case for all of them, but at the end of the day, nothing matters unless you get the right guy. I mean, yeah. you can have a great game plan, but if you draft a turd in the first round, everything else is going to look really bad. Yeah. So let's let's try. Can we try and find that clip? Uh, it's it's near the end of the video. One of the so it, it's the the deep in route he runs against Akuda. Let's go back. Go back. Uh, there it is. I, think that's I found it. it. There it is. All right. Yeah. Just go back and you can break that bad boy down. So. I, when, you, when you sent me the notes back, I saw it right away. I'm like, yeah, 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 I see it. I see what you're talking about. So this play here, let's make sure I have the right one. So everyone knows I'm currently going on about 75% speed. So he's on top of the screen here. This is the right one here. Just a simple slant route. Now, yes, it's a completion, okay? And Jeffrey Akuda is one of the blue chip guys in this draft, meaning one of the elites of the elites, okay? So 
I'm not crucifying him for the fact that he can't get separation against a guy who probably will be a pro bowler in the next two to three years realistically here. But what I do think is something we need to talk about as maybe an area for development is his ability to separate the top of the route. Now, he can win because he's a good athlete. The problem is when you go against some of the top athletes in college, now you also need to win with technique. And this is where I still think he's very raw. So what we're going to see here at the top of the route, he's going to try to separate and try to get a a sharp angle here on the slant, like every slant route normally is. What Jalen's going to do is he's going to kind of use, you know, maybe we uh, call it a nice separation. Other people would call it a stiff arm at the top of his route here. But play strength isn't great here. Doesn't really get enough of a push to really get a large separation. Now, is it a completion? Sure, it absolutely is. But you know what? This is not something that you want to see consistently happen. This is a situation, Adrian, that he might have this completed 40% of the time. But if he doesn't get the separation at the top of the route, it's hard for me, Adrian, to believe he'll all of a sudden become better at separating against press coverage unless he seriously works on his technique. And as you said perfectly, gets with a great receivers coach. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the thing I I saw with him, uh, I think I talked about it earlier in the video, but the, the strong hands, again, to pluck the ball out of the air and then not get it, you know, tomahawked out of his hands. And that's, that's something that you see so much with, with these receivers and cornerbacks are doing more of that. And I didn't notice the ball get, get ripped out a lot. So that's, that's a plus for him. And another plus for him is these next two plays that we're going to look at. So we know what he can do in between the 20s. He can fly. But in the red zone, he can go up and get it, too. This is not something you expect from a guy at his six foot one stature. He will go this up and attack me. This surprised me. Bottom of the screen here, go up and get it. And and there's plenty of examples of him attacking yeah. the ball. And Adrian, here's another one. Got another fade route here against Iowa State. Just go get the ball now. Mm, that's beautiful. It is, Adrian. And we talked about this as something we didn't love with KJ Hamler. Just didn't see a, a large enough sample size of him doing this. Again, guys, just so everyone knows, we're watching on 75% speed. But a very, very good job at attacking the ball in, in congested situations here. But my beef I have with him, Adrian, is – and maybe this explains it. Maybe it's not that he has bad hands. Maybe it's that he's constantly thinking yak, 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 that he's concentration lapses for yeah. making some of the drops on the easier receptions. No, that, that's exactly right because on those plays he needs to concentrate. On the other plays he's thinking – about his turn up field and what he's going to do after the catch. And that's a great point. That's actually probably why he's dropping the ball. Let's talk about this one. This is a route I really like. So just a quick now screen we would call it to a receiver. And football is a very simple game. We just like to make it complicated for whatever damn reason. But this is as simple as it is here. Jalen Rager's here. Corner's going to get blocked by the receiver. Rager has a two-way go, outside or inside. He's basically is going to read this safety. And whatever this safety is going to do, he's wrong. Whatever the safety picks, he's wrong, and Jalen's going to actually make him pay for it here. So the safety decides to come inside gap, and then as you see here from Jalen's ability, he's got a really good dead leg, really good burst. Okay, now I'm going to take advantage, go to the outside here, and make something happen with it. Okay, so, so going back to fit, right, and the Eagles, and talking about what he can do within the offense, reverses, end arounds, jet sweeps. And the other play that they like to run with, with Aguilar a lot is where they kind of motion him in the backfield and then they run the swing route. Jalen Rager did a lot of that too at TCU. So those are other little things I'm, I'm taking into account here. Yeah, again, Adrian talked about system fit. I can, I can see that. Like I can see how this could you know, be a good fit for, for Jalen and his skill set. A lot of times these slot guys, K.J. Hamler is in this draft class, Jalen Rager, Brandon Ayuk, all of these guys, LaVishka St. Nault is another one of these guys that I could see all fitting in and kind of playing in that gadget-like role for the Eagles. Yep. More elusiveness here. This is, this is a really shifty move against Purdue. Yeah, it is. On the Boilermakers here in the home turf. Again, we talked about this, Adrian. Just his ability to stop start is really special. I'm very curious to see what he's going to run in the 40. I think yeah. there's going to be a really interesting situation between him, K.J. Hamler, LaVishka St. Nault, Brandon Ayuk, I think all of those guys are pretty darn tight. Yep, yep. All right, and then one last thing with his, uh, with the positives here, this punt return ability. He's got it. So Ayuk and, and Rager, if, if you want to go with one of those two guys, they can also return punts, and that's something that the Eagles need. It's like bonus points, really, yeah. in the end of the day. Like, if you can return things, you always want more of them. Great vision here, great burst. 
And then normally you see the speed, but now he's, I am going at 75%, but you can still see he's like, yeah, I'm in. I'm not going to pull anything. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So this is, this is the clip that we showed already, the, the slant on Akuda. So yep. we'll need to show that again, or at least break it down again. But the next play, we're going to get into the concentration lapses and the drops. This is something, Adrian, uh, uh, man, I, I go back and forth with this. And I go back and forth on this because I want to say, okay, is this your fault? Is this you can't do it? Or is this thinking yak? Now, let me kind of talk about down and this. This is a poor throw. It's a poor throw. So and you got to make the adjustment. I also will give him a little credit here. You're down 12 with three minutes to go. Ball's backed up. You got to make a play against Ohio State. Okay, I get it. He's probably a little more thinking, I got to push it. I got to be aggressive. But in the end of the day, I've never seen a completion when the receiver didn't catch the ball first. And that's a concern for me. Yeah, and this is, we're going to see it again here. Another one, simple, simple curl route. This time it gets completely square to the ball, just blows it. Yep. Yep, that's, that's, bad, uh, that's bad hands right there. Well, bad concentration. All right, so that, that's it right there. Uh, now, another thing I know you wanted to get into is his lack of production statistic, statistically. Um, what, now, my argument would be this quarterback stunk. Duggan, I think that's his name. Uh, there were several times where I, you know, he kind of underthrew some of the deep balls. So if you're underthrowing a deep ball with a guy who can catch 60 yard passes, you know, yeah. if, if you're inaccurate on say like four passes all year, that's a hundred, 200 yards right there. You're getting off. So, um, just curious though, on, on your thoughts, cause he was less, I think it was like 400 yards less this year. Mm -hmm. His number, his numbers uh, were in 2018, 1,061 yards on 72 receptions and nine touchdowns, I believe. Yeah, nine touchdowns here. 2019, 43 receptions, 611 yards receiving, and five touchdowns. So I hear you, Adrian. I'm not going to argue if your quarterback play wasn't, wasn't a factor because it certainly, certainly was. But in 2018, TC didn't have good quarterback play either. I mean, they, they played multiple quarterbacks in 2018. And if that's something we want to – um, I think it's fair. I think it's certainly something you got to kind of grade with an even scale. KJ Hamler, not great quarterback play. Yeah. Saint-Nault, not great quarterback play. Brandon Ayuk, not great quarterback play. Truthfully, this second group of guys, all of them, not great quarterback play. So I don't think you're wrong, Adrian, for addressing that or at least bringing it up. But I think we also have to say if it's going to be an excuse for one, it's an excuse for this whole group, to be honest with you. Oh, it definitely is. And, and Ayuk had more production. So, and, and there were definitely instances where he was getting underthrown as well. So it's, it's all the way around. Um, I'm going to watch more tape on him. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to study him up a little bit more because that Ohio State game was 2018. It was last year. It wasn't this year. So maybe he wouldn't have fared as well this year. Who knows? Um, but – from what I saw, I, I think he'd be a good fit for the Eagles. I don't, I don't know if, how good of a fit he'd be for other teams. Like, if, if you're asking him to run a big route tree, that's, that's not going to work for him. Uh, so I, I don't see him as like a, a number one, number one. I see him as like a complement to a number one. That's how I view him. Like a really, he could be a really good number two. I like that. Yeah, I, I don't have anything to, uh, to say anything about mean about that. It's like you could have a really good – you know, like strawberry on your ice cream. Yeah. But it's not the primary. It's the secondary kind of thing, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I get where you're coming from, Adrian. I don't have any disagreements there. But I think if you're, if you're investing in him and thinking he's going to be a number one receiver, I think you're barking up the wrong tree. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm looking at him as guy who can get vertical, guy who's going to catch some screens, going to help you in punt, not going to be able to run the whole route tree, but that's okay because you have other weapons. That's the way I look at him. It's going to be critical for him, KJ Hamler, Lavishu Sainal, those those three guys, and I think Ayuk too. I think Ayuk's ahead of these guys personally, but it's going to be really critical, not just the combine, but how do these guys work out? You know, when they're asked to run a full route tree in the one-on-one -on -one workouts, which is something none of us are going to know because those are all private events and private workouts. But that will be something that will really determine when these school, when these uh, staff stack their boards, how they separate from each other. Yep. All right, so there it is. That's Jalen Rager. Um, Brendan has somewhat convinced me somewhat a little bit a little bit not all the way though so we'll see as this process continues uh, we'll see if we have any other differentiations but 
definitely one here. So if that's Brennan Albert, I am Adrian FedQ. That's Jalen Rager. You have to go. So we're out of here. Peace. Appreciate it.